If you're anything like me, I've had one of these sitting in a shelf for you're not quite sure what to do with it. Well, I'm here to show you what to do. I'm Mr. Best Tech and I'm your Raspberry Pi Ally 3.0. Hey guys, your Raspberry Pi Ally is back and this time he's been upgraded to version 3.0. So the Raspberry Pi 3 was released uh, quite recently so I thought it was high time to bring this series back and update it a little bit. Um, I've had a look at the Raspberry Pi 3 and so far I'm really enjoying the fact that it's quad core has been upgraded to 1.2 gigahertz and has built in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and all for the same price as the Raspberry Pi 1 and 2 were when they were originally released. So I have a couple of projects in mind for this series, but today we're going to start with the basics. We're going to install noobs on our Raspberry Pi. Now for this, you'll need an 8GB microSD card, the Raspberry Pi itself, and a power supply that's capable of supplying at least 1mAh of power. Or that's 1000 amps, same difference. You'll also need a card reader of some description. If you have a laptop, this probably won't matter to you, because all you'll need is one of these SD card kind of full-size adapters that you can put the micro SD card into and then you can put it into your laptop. If you have a modern laptop that shouldn't be much of an issue most of them have built in SD card slots but if not if you just have a normal PC or even a laptop that doesn't have an SD card slot you can get one of these. You can pick one of these up in deals uh, or in Poundland uh, it's €1.49 in deals in Ireland I assume it's a pound in Poundland by our favourite brand Signal X. Very very cheap but it works. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's install noobs on our Raspberry Pi 3. Step 1 is downloading and installing the SD Formatter tool from the SD Association's website. You'll find the link for that in the description below. So firstly what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take our multi-card reader here. Uh, just have a quick look at it. As you can see it does loads of different formats but we're mostly worried about the micro SD card slot. Uh, you'll see it has the USB port at the back of it there. So we're going to take our micro SD card, we're going to put it into our multi-card reader, like so. Uh, we're going to take the USB connection out, like so. And we're going to put it into our USB hub, like this, or just the USB port on your machine itself. Or SD card slot on your laptop. As you can see, mine's a little funky TARDIS. So we're going to go to the SD Association's website now to download the SD Formatter tool. There's two different versions. You've got one for Mac or one for Windows. As I don't have a Mac, I'm going to download the Windows version, obviously, as you can see here. Uh, you'll just need to click on the Windows version, agree to sell your soul to the SD Card Association. You'll see it's downloading there. That sequence is a little bit sped up. My internet connection is not that fast, but it's 360 megs supplied by Virgin Media. It's not too bad. So once that's downloaded, you want to run the setup file that's in the zip file. Windows should open it automatically, and you basically just need to keep clicking on next and next and finish until the program is installed. You'll see it installing here, it actually doesn't take too long. You just want to agree to this prompt here because it's going to make some administrative changes to your machine. Nothing too major, just needs it to install the program. Doesn't take that long to install at all. A couple of seconds and you'll see there that it's pretty much done. So you want to open your start menu now. And you'll see that one of the recently added programs is SD Formatter. This may look a little bit different on your machine, as I have Windows 10. You may have a different version of Windows. So when it starts up, you want to make sure that you select the right drive letter. That's very important. You don't want to end up formatting the wrong thing. My drive letter there, as you can see, is H. You want to just click on Format, and then click OK. Click OK again on that prompt. And it just takes a couple of seconds to format the SD card. You want to do it with this particular tool because it is, uh, it's able to fully resize the card and you won't need to worry about any space issues or anything like that. So step two is installing noobs on the micro SD card. So we want to go to the raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads forward slash noobs site and you see we have two different download options there, download torrent, download zip. We're going to download the zip as you can see here. It'll just take a little bit of time to download, so we're going to skip ahead now to when the file is actually downloaded. So as you can see here, we have the drive letter H opened on the left hand side, that's our SD card. We're going to select everything from the noobs zip and we're going to drag and drop it over to the H drive. 
and that'll just take a little bit of time but we'll use our trick from the last videos we'll click to speed it up so everything's copied over now step three is booting the Raspberry Pi So we're going to take our multi-card reader out of the USB hub or the SD card out of your laptop, whatever you happen to have. You want to take the micro SD card out of the reader and put it into the Raspberry Pi 3. Now you want to connect your HDMI cable, which you should have ready and connected to your monitor. And we are also going to connect our power supply, like so. And you'll know that you've done it correctly when you push it in like this and you see the red light come on. On the Raspberry Pi itself now you'll see you'll get a multicolored square, you'll get some text, and then Noobs will boot up itself. It resizes a couple of different things, and then you'll get the option to install Raspbian, which is going to be the only option available. Now, because the Raspberry Pi 3 has built-in Wi-Fi, you want to click on Wi-Fi networks here, and connect it to your Wi-Fi network. So we're just going to click on our Wi-Fi network. For instance, mine is the one at the top. It's the Virgin Media Wi-Fi network. And we're just going to type in my network password, which obviously I'm not going to give you guys. <laughs> so it just takes a second to type in. And then you just want to hit enter on the keyboard. You'll see it's just connecting there. And then you get a couple of more options, a couple of more different operating systems that you can install. And that's pretty much it, you have installed Noobs on your Raspberry Pi. And the next step then will be to select an operating system of your choice and to get it installed. But we'll go through that in the next episode. Well there you have it guys, that's how to install Noobs on your Raspberry Pi and make your first steps towards installing a full operating system of your choice. In the next episode I'll be showing you how to install OpenELEC, which is an operating system for Kodi. Kodi will allow you to create your own home media entertainment station where you can watch live TV from around the world and watch your own legally downloaded films and TV shows from your own home network or portable USB drive or USB stick. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial, and more importantly, if you've learned anything from this, please click the subscribe button right up there. Um, I'd also love to hear your comments, questions and suggestions via the comments section. I may even feature your comment in the next tutorial video. You can also like the Mr. Vestec group uh, and page on Facebook by clicking here. Uh, we have a Facebook group which you can join. And you can also follow me on Twitter here and on Google Plus by clicking here. I wonder how you watch your own home movies and TV shows using your Raspberry Pi 3. You want to know how to get your own TV shows onto the Raspberry Pi? Don't do what I just did. I can't figure it out. Tune in for the next episode where we install OpenELEC on the Raspberry Pi 3.